What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Sava Tech once again, and as promised, we're going to go over how to set up a master node. Today, we're going to be focusing on the Desire coin because somebody in the comments requested it and I was already interested in it per the video you can check out up here in the corner. So let's get started. Welcome back. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get yourself a Desire wallet. You can head on over to desire-crypto.com slash downloads and download the Windows wallet. We won't be covering the Linux or Mac wallet in this how-to, so you have to look somewhere else if you're looking to set that up with the master node. So once you have it downloaded, you will need to run it and let it complete syncing, which can take some time, so just let it go and come back to the wallet. Once you're ready to go, you'll want to head on over to the receive tab and create a label. I'm going to label this one master node one and I'm going to put the amount in for 1,000 and just uh, whatever message, doesn't really matter. So at this point, I'm gonna click request payment and then I'm going to select the address and copy it. Now we have to talk about the exchanges. So if you head on over to CoinMarketCap, you can see that there are three exchanges. The top one is the Mercatox. I think that's the way it's pronounced. Probably not. Mercato. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. But you can see here that it has one of the better prices as well as the most volume. So you'll be able to purchase these pretty quickly. You can purchase it by creating the account. It does obviously offer two-factor authentication as well. So make sure you activate that before doing this. And then just come on up and deposit some Bitcoin and then you can go over to the trade tab and buy some Desire. Of course, I'll leave a link up here in the corner as well for how you can trade cryptocurrencies, etc., on an exchange. This one's no different. If you use my affiliate link in the description below, I'm not sure what it provides me, but I'm assuming something and I'll put it there later. I'm pretty new to this exchange, but it does have two-factor authentication, so I'm happy with that. Once that's done, you will have your 1,000 however many desire. Be sure to account for the fee, and then you're going to want to click the withdraw button. At this point, this is where you will paste the address for your wallet that you've just created, and then you will want to send 1,000 dot whatever the fee is. So you see the transaction fee is .01. So 1,000.01. You want to make sure that the total amount is exactly 1,000 because after you get send this to the wallet, the only way the wallet's going to be able to determine if it's a master node is if the transaction was exactly 1,000. So click submit and then at this point, we can hurry up and wait after we, of course, confirm it with the email that they send us. Alrighty, so you can see that I have confirmed it. We confirmed the withdrawal and it has been paid. Now you'll see here that I did make the mistake of sending 1000.1 initially because I was reading a how-to and they were using a different exchange that was uh, obviously had a higher fee. So this exchange for Desire also has a smaller fee, which is pretty cool. At least I can confirm that. And we all make mistakes, so hopefully these videos will help you guys not make the mistakes that I make. So once we're done, we're just gonna go back to our overview and see that we are now waiting on a pending withdrawal of 1000 Desire. I'll check back in with you guys as soon as this is complete. So as discussed earlier in the What is a Masternode video, you guys should know by now that you have to have a server of some kind. Today we're gonna to talk about setting up a VPS server in Vulture. If you create the account with my affiliate link, I will get some credit, which will help pay for our pool front ends, our mining pool front ends, so that'd be much appreciated. And once in here, you can just click the deploy new server button and select the location of your desire. The server wants to be Ubuntu 14.04. That's what's supported in all of the documentation at this time and the server size will want to be the $10 a month 40 gigabyte SSD with one CPU and two gigs of memory. Keep in mind that you can use the $5 a month server but you'll have to create a swap file and I don't feel like going into that in this particular how-to as that would probably lengthen the video beyond what is tolerable for most people. So once you've done that, you will just go ahead and enter a server name and then enter a label if you like and click the deploy now button. I've already created an example here called desire example for y'all. 
and if you click into it, you can get all the information such as IP address, username, and password. Please reset your password and usernames, probably create a whole new user once you're in, and just make sure that that's what you're authenticating with. You'll need to pick up an application for Windows called Putty, which I'll leave a link in the description for down below. And once you download and install the MSI installer right here for 64-bit for most cases, you can go ahead and get to work on your server. So if I hop back on over to my server details and open Putty, essentially all I need to do is copy my IP address and then in the Putty connection box, type in root at and paste my IP address. At this point, I can click open and it will request my username or sorry it will request the password that has been provided to me by vulture which i can click copy password and just right click in the putty screen to paste it won't show any stars or anything it just stays blank and press enter so now that we are logged in we can get to work like i said consider creating a new user and then there are two options for security you want to consider. Either you want to generate an SSH key which will authenticate only your desktop to an SSH session and that will provide an adequate amount of security and I'll leave a how-to on how to do that down below but that's not the focus of this video once again. The other option that you can do is just turn off SSH and once after you've set up your master node and everything just disable SSH and I'll leave a link to how to do that in the description below. It's a little easier than setting up uh, keys and then what you can do when you want to re-enable it is just come into your Vulture dashboard, click the three ellipses and click the view console and from here you can once again log in and then you can re-enable SSH if you want. So those are the two options for security. I'm going to be very adamant that you do one of them. I don't care which one. I think that the former to the latter is more convenient, but I, like I said, there's just not enough time to go through all of this at this point. All right, so the last portion for Vulture is gonna be pretty simple. We just need to set up a firewall rule. You can do this by clicking the firewall tab on the top right, and then clicking add firewall group. We'll do desire example here and click add firewall group. At this point, we're going to want to add a TCP protocol rule to port 9919, and we'll just leave the source as anywhere and click add. Once this is complete, you'll have to link it to your desire master node by clicking linked instances and then selecting the particular desire master node server that you have configured and then clicking the add button. It'll ask you if you're sure and you will click OK. And that completes adding the firewall rule for your master node. And you can continue on from here. Okay, so after you've waited on the first confirmation, and we have nine confirmations now here, we can continue the setup for the wallet side of the master node. We can do this by going to tools and debug console. Once in the debug console, you want to type master node gen key these will be in the description below for all the commands and you'll want to copy your master node key that you just generated and save it in a text file for later then the next thing you'll want to type in is going to be master node outputs and it will also deliver a string of letters with two brackets just copy the entire thing and paste that in the same text file underneath the key you just generated. Now we will want to go to tools and open wallet configuration guide or wallet configuration I should say configuration file and then I will put this sample in the description as well or at least on my Steemit page I'll link the entire guides for you guys to follow along with as well and you will want to configure all of this accordingly with your information. If you remember in our server setup guide, you'll want to go back to your VPS and that's where you will find your VPS IP, which will be this IP right here. And you'll want to paste that into your external IP for the VPS IP. And then you will want to put your gen key that we did earlier right here in this slot. 
Once that's complete, we'll need to open the masternode configuration file. So we'll once again click tools and then click open masternode configuration file. The example will be as follows. You'll have your masternode, so MN1, and then you will put once again your VPS IP in. Then after the VPS and port, you will input the key that you got from the masternode outputs. At this point, we are ready to configure our VPS server. As stated before, I will be showing you how to do this on an internal VM that I already have, but the setup will be exactly the same after you followed the earlier steps to set up your VPS. At this point on the right side, you will see all of the commands that you now need to run and you can just go through them and run them one by one by copying and pasting them. These will all be in the description below and you will just want to wait for one to complete to continue on to the next one. Alrighty, so now it is time to modify the desire configuration. So you'll do that by doing the nanodesire.conf and then pasting the example in here. You'll want to replace the private key with your masternode private key that you generated from your wallet earlier and your IP with your virtual private server IP from Vulture and your RPC username and password to whatever username and password you have already set previously on the wallet side. Press Control X to save and press yes. And now you need to open the port 9919 TCP to on the VPS server as well. And that should take care of that. Then we're going to want to change the directory to the desire slash source and start the daemon and it should get a message that says desired core server started and now we can check the block count alrighty so after you've started the desired coin daemon you are going to have to wait on the blocks to sync you can check this with the command in the description also found in the how to right here and you can see here that we have block 28042 to confirm that you are on the current block you'll need to go to desire.thecryptohat.net and check the current block once you have reached the current block, you are ready to continue. Please be patient. It will stay at zero for a little while. Don't freak out. Just give it some time. It should be maybe like 15 to 20 minutes. So give it at least that to start building and you'll start seeing it. See, I was checking it for a while here and had zero, zero, zero. Then you'll start getting some 32. Then it just starts kind of snowballing and, and hurries up and gets the job done. Once we're complete with that, we can start our master node from our main wallet. So we're gonna head on over to our wallet VM. So in our wallet VM, we will go to settings and options and then click the wallet tab. And we'll want to enable coin features and show the master nodes tab and then click okay. Alrighty, so now that we're back in our main wallet, we can go ahead and enter into the master nodes tab and then click start alias. At this point we can click yes and it should say successfully started master node. If we get this error watchdog expired, we can head back on over to the VPS to make another change. So we will go ahead and click out of this. Alrighty, and now that we're back onto our VPS, we will just want to go ahead and change directory to the desire core. So I'm gonna 
just go up a couple. And as you guys can see here, we're going to want to go into the desire core. And then we are going to want to run the sentinel lin 64 so we can just do the dot board slash and run that. All right, son, so that's going to wrap up how to start your own Desire Masternode. Keep in mind that all of this is sort of a work in progress, and this was my first time spinning up a Desire Masternode, so I still have a couple questions like what the payouts are going to be. We'll have to check after 30 hours, like I stated earlier. And I'm not quite sure if that watchdog error will ever clear up. Now, I'm told that it shouldn't affect payouts, but to get everything working properly, I'd like to get that sorted. So when I get that figured out with the Desire community on their Discord, I'll try to wrap back around and let you guys know what's going on with that. Now, all of that being said, this is a disclaimer, I guess, at this point. This is not financial advice. This is just technical documentation of how to do this. I'm not saying go out and get yourself this particular masternode. And if you work through this particular masternode, in general, every other master node is going to be about the same or at least the same principle. So you'll get a better idea of how to do it for other coins when you come down the line to them. I'll leave a whole bunch of extra documentation down in the description, including the source documents for the how to's and where I found them and the desired discord. I will also create a master nodes chat room in our personal son's chat discord and you can come on over there. If you have any questions, if I have the answers, I'll help you work through them. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next Tuesday.